Yo, how's it going guys? It's Abs here and welcome back to another Gears of War lore video. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining the Locust Grenadiers, all of their variations and explaining them in full detail. So as always, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss another lore video. And yeah, let's dive straight into it. So the Grenadiers were Locust Shock Troopers, often seen wielding a Nasha shotgun and bolt-up pistol, or throwing bolo grenades. Grenadiers should always be remembered for their weapons and their fighting style. They always use their Nasha shotgun in standard combat and should never be allowed to get in close. Their other go-to weapon that they use are their bolo frag grenades and at times are also seen with the Boltok or the Lancer assault rifle and they had a better more improved physique over the Locust drones so they were the ultimate assault troops for the Locust and the Grenadiers were known to be extremely aggressive. Their homeland was the Hollow, just like the other Locust, and they had grey skin with black scales. Their skin is practically rock hard in terms of durability, severely limiting the usage of cutting and slashing weapons against them. This was discovered on or soon after E-Day, when the Sirens found that they were unable to defend themselves with their bayonets and combat knives, and so the Chainsaw Bayonets made an excellent addition to the Lancer, for the cog to pierce through locusts like the grenadiers who like to get up close and personal. So these are the base grenadier variants and then we also have many different grenadier subclasses which I will be breaking down as well. So first up we've got the grenadier elites. So these were the higher rank of the standard grenadier and they can take and deal a lot more damage. Like the grenadier they are always equipped with a Nasha shotgun, bolo grenades and a boltock pistol. They wear studded shoulder armour and a chest strap and they appear to be much more seasoned combat operatives as evidenced by their constant flanking attempts on higher difficulties. Their barbaric armour suggests that they are rather brutal fighters and up close they prefer to go for a one shot kill with an Asher shotgun. Grenadier elites are very very skilled with the bowl or grenades so just because you're in cover doesn't necessarily mean that you're safe and in battle they act almost leader like and rush in to kill any cog gear with their shotgun and then they run off to the next foe. Grenadier elites are therefore considered quite deadly and they should not be underestimated. So in essence they are the Locust's elite assault troops and they were seen throughout the Locust war just like the standard Grenadier variants. And then we also have the Flame Grenadiers. So the Flame Grenadier was a Locust Grenadier armed exclusively with the Scorcher Flamethrower. And, like all Grenadier classes, they specialised in close quarters combat. They were first encountered during the destruction of Halvor Bay, though only as prototypes to test their capabilities. And later on the Coalition encountered more armoured Grenadiers during the evacuation of Alima and later Operation Hollow Storm. Flame Grenadiers are also equipped with a backpack fuel tank that significantly increases the fuel capacity of the Scorcher. They are equipped with the same armour that the Locust Grenadier Elites have on, but the Flame Grenadiers also have a heat resistant helmet and a back mounted fuel pack. But similarly to the Flame Boomers and the Flame Drones, the Flame Grenadiers can be blown to bits if you set off their fuel tanks by shooting at it. And the Flame Grenadiers, just like the Grenadier Elites and the Standard Grenadiers were seen throughout the Locust War. And then we have the Locust Ravagers. So the Locust Ravager was the highest ranking subclass of Grenadier. They were made up of the most brutally strong and tremendously resilient Grenadiers in the Locust Horde's army. The Ravagers were charged with being the initial storming force when breaching, clearing and laying waste to key fortified cog facilities and fortifications. The Ravagers are at the top of the Grenadier food chain, similar to how the Palace Guard are at the top of the Theron hierarchy, so they are the Locust Horde's apex assault troops and they are also armed with the Nasha and Bolo grenades as well and the Ravagers have the Locust runes for Breach and Kill branded into their arms which is their motto. A side note is that in Gears of War 2 Marcus notes the appearance of markings on the bodies of Locust drones following the first encounter with the Cantus but they were never shown nor elaborated on further. Now these brands are presumably the same markings Marcus was referring to. So to elaborate on the Locust runes, the Locust runes basically represent the writing of the Locust Horde. They consist of symbols which represent individual letters. However, the Locust pronounce these letters and symbols the same as Tyron. 
The locust runes were based on a lexigram board found in the Mount Kadar laboratory where the locust horde was created in order for the scientists to communicate with the drones. So the picture you can see is a computerized version of the locust language. So the locust also had a computerized version of the locust runes. These characters are cleaner and less calligraphic than the handwritten alphabet. Many of the symbols remain similar to the handwritten versions although some letters differ greatly to the point of being unrecognizable when compared to the handwritten counterpart. So that's a bit about locust runes there. And then the locust ravagers also have cylinders strapped to their waist, which are locust breaching charges. And these were used when creating entry points in enemy facilities and fortifications. Now when it comes to the locust ravagers armor, it really differentiates from other grenadier armor, the overall armour aesthetic was meant to give off a very Juggernaut-esque feel with some gladiatorial inspiration. And I just want to give a big shout out to Parasidian who worked at the coalition who helped bring this character to life and of course made it canon in the Gears of War universe. And then we also have the Locust Hunters. So the Locust Hunter was an elite class of drone that predated the Grenadier and was originally designed with the task of hunting down and killing certain humans such as military and civilian leaders early on in the Locust War. In essence, they were Locust Assassins in all but name. The Locust Hunters, they were armed with a deadly torque bolt on its right arm and they were equipped with light armor designed to be easily spotted. The Hunter was developed to be the showcase for the deadly weapon, but the torque bolt was eventually given to the Theron Guard and the Hunters were identifiable by their horned-like signature Hunter helmets. The Locust Hunters were eventually deprived of their main design purpose, so the Locust Hunter was stripped of its original armor and given a Nasher shotgun and several frag grenades, becoming the Locust Grenadier. It is said that it was not included in the final game because of conflicts with the animations, so they weren't seen in any Gears of War campaigns, but they were seen in multiplayer and official Gears of War media. And we also had the Locust Hunter Elites. So the Locust Hunter Elites were more aggressive and deadly than the lower ranks of Hunters. Hunter Elites were masters in assassination and they were of course considered a serious threat to the COG High Command. They also bear a strong resemblance to the Locust Grenadiers but they are seen as more of a threat in battle. They wore one of the least amounts of armour in the entirety of the Locust Horde due to their already toughened hides acting as enough protection for these assassins. But like their lower brethren, Hunter Elites were originally given torque bows to locate and hunt down very important humans such as military and civilian leaders. But they were eventually replaced by the Theron Guards early on in the Locust War and they were given Nasher shotguns instead. Nevertheless, they themselves were replaced by the Grenadiers. And in appearance, the Hunter Elite are of course very very similar to the standard Grenadier. The only difference between the two is that the Hunter Elite is armoured with a shoulder plate, but the Grenadier is not. So yeah, these were the Locust's Master Assassins, which were known as the Locust Hunter Elites. And then we also have the Savage variants of the Locust Grenadiers as well. So the Savage Locust were former members of the Locust Horde, who survived the flooding of the Hollow, and they reverted into a feral state without the guidance of their Queen. When the Jacinto City was sunk underground by the Coalition of Ordered Governments, the entire inner hollow was flooded, killing a majority of the Locust Horde by drowning before they could evacuate the hollow. Those on the surface survived and splintered into two factions. The Locust without Queen Mira's guidance, they reverted to a tribal and nomadic way of life, while the Locust guarding Queen Mira maintained guidance and direction, becoming the Queen's guard. Despite being less organized and without a hive mentality, the Savage Locust were just as dangerous as the Locust Horde or Queen's Guard as they maintained hostility towards all humans. So one of the members of the Savage Locust were of course the Savage Grenadiers. Now the Savage Grenadier was a Locust drone that appeared around 18 months after the sinking of Jacinto. They are drones that reverted to primal ways, they have become tribalistic and are much more aggressive and they use primitive weapons and they charge at their enemies like barbarians. With access to gunpowder becoming far more scarce, Savage Grenadiers opted to use incendiary grenades rather than bolo grenades due to its bountiful resource of flammable alcohol mix and ease in construction. Unlike the normal Grenadiers, the Savage Grenadiers have not limited themselves to the use of one weapon like the Nasher. They use a range of weapons, including the Hammerburst Assault Rifle, 
the Lancer assault rifle and the sword off shotgun. They would also wear an aviator's hat with goggles giving them a more savage look than the base grenadier variants. And then we also have the Savage Grenadier Elite as well. So the Savage Grenadier Elite was the Savage Locust variant of the Grenadier Elite who we previously talked about. And they are also drones that reverted to primal ways. They have become tribalistic and are much more aggressive and they use primitive weapons and they charge at their enemies like barbarians as well. They were the elite Savage Assault Troops for the Savage Locust and like the Savage Grenadiers, Savage Grenadier Elites have opted to use incendiary grenades due to the scarcity of black powder. However, their higher rank means that they are privileged in gaining access to the Savage Locust's valuable stash of bolo grenades. And unlike their loyalist brethren, Savage Grenadier Elites actually wear more armour than the Savage Grenadiers. And then we also have the Savage Hunters. Now the Savage Hunter was an elite troop primarily used to track down the hiding gears and humans of Sera. Hunters are bred for one reason, and they do not relent. It doesn't matter that they're abandoned to the Deadlands, you still can't hide from them. Eventually, they will find you. They of course do live up to their name. So they are known for their habit of finding humans relentlessly, and they are not to be messed with. Despite the disbandment of the Hunters in favour of Grenadiers earlier on in the Locust War, the Savage Locust, due to either desperation or lack of coherent command structure, led to the return of the Hunter Assassins. They are one of the most vicious and degenerate looking locusts out there. Even amongst the standards of the Savage Locusts, they sport large fangs and they resemble more like a snake than they do a locust. And in the Gears of War universe, there are also Lambent Grenadiers. So during Operation Hollow Storm, Delta Squad advanced through the Locust Capital Nexus and they saw many Grenadiers turning Lambent and they were attacking Nexus during the Locust Civil War, overpowering Locust forces. Lambent Grenadier corpses were found by Delta Squad, and later a squad approached Delta and one of them tried to attack them, but Augustus Cole disposed of it. So the Lambent Grenadier was a Locust Grenadier, which had endured a prolonged exposure to emulsion. It is unknown how long the Lambent existed, but they were discovered within the first two days of Frost, by the Sirens while fighting the Locust Horde in Nexus. And we can assume that many Lambent Grenadiers also fought against the Locust during the Lambent War as well. As Locust Grenadiers would become infected, they would begin to glow a yellow greenish signature Lambent colour and then they would eventually fully mutate into a Lambent Grenadier just like the Lambent Drones. And as Delta saw in Nexus, the Lambent were overpowering Locust forces so the Lambent Grenadiers do seem to be a lot tougher than the Locust Grenadiers. So there you have it guys, there's the Locust Grenadiers in Gears of War explained. So if you did enjoy this video, be sure to drop a like and comment down below. What do you think of the Locust Grenadiers? Which are your favourite Locust Grenadier variants? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe if you're new to the channel so you don't miss another lore video. And be sure to check out my playlist for all lore related content. Hope you guys have a great day and I'll catch you next time.